So Resident Evil 7 is now out for the Apple Silicon Mac. And not only does the game look great and is fantastically optimized for the highest end MacBook Pro with the M3 Max chip, it is also extremely playable even on the base M1 MacBook Air with only 8GB of RAM and 8 GPU cores. And this game comes as the latest addition to the Resident Evil series, hitting the Apple ecosystem including iPhone and iPad as well, unified into a single purchase across all devices. So first up, we're looking at my MacBook Air with the base M1 chip, and we're running this at 1080p with basically default settings, which includes Metal FX upscaling turned on to quality mode. At this resolution and setting, especially with upscaling turned on, we're getting excellent performance, pretty much consistently going over 60 FPS, and in some scenes, even going over 90 FPS. And part of the reason that this is working so well, of course, is the fact that we're using Metal FX upscaling, which at quality mode basically renders the game at 720p and upscales to 1080p, and uses algorithms in order to sharpen it to make it look good at this resolution, hugely improving performance of the game. Now one downside of Metal FX is the fact that hair rendering is a little bit worse because we're upscaling those fine details. Also it looks like we have some kind of hair physics bug in the game as well on the Mac side, which absolutely does not look great, but it's quite rare in the game to see that much hair. And when I turned Metal FX off, the hair rendering was a little bit less distracting. And also what I found is that Metal FX isn't strictly necessary in order to get good performance even on the base M1 chip. And even with Metal FX turned off, we're getting about 45 to 55 FPS, which ain't too bad for a passively cooled fanless MacBook Air. However, the frame rate wasn't consistent for some reason. For example, when I tried to go up to this door, it would consistently hitch down to something like 10 FPS. And this wasn't happening at other quality settings. I didn't manage to isolate which quality setting actually affected this, but it wasn't happening on default or with Metal FX turned on. Now on my MacBook Pro with the M3 Mac, chip. What I found is that I didn't actually need to turn on Metal FX. I could actually have all of the settings turned on to very high. And even though I'm running the game at 4K resolution at the very highest settings, I was easily hitting that 60 FPS mark. Here I had to turn on VSync, but that's just because of my capture setup. Personally as well, I think that 60 FPS is all you really need from this game. And the M3 Max was easily able to hold this despite running at 4K at higher settings. And this just goes to show that games can run great on the M1 to the M3 Max as long as they're optimized for the hardware. So it's not too big of a surprise that this runs better than other recent Apple Silicon Mac entries like Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil Village. Now personally, I actually prefer Resident Evil 7 to the other entries due to its puzzles, story, and focus on horror. It has drawn me in far more than those other action-oriented games, and the Apple Silicon Mac is the perfect place to play it, no matter which chipset that you have access to. If you do buy it, you're gonna get access, of course, to the iPhone and iPad versions as well. I've tried it on the iPhone and I really do not recommend it even if you have a compatible phone. The controls and performance don't really let you absorb the atmosphere that this game deserves. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room which is the game's price. Now Resident Evil 7 first came out in 2017 and it's now more than seven and a half years old. You can download the game app for free and play up to the first level area which will give you a really good feel of whether you're going to like this game. And then once you reach that point you'll be met with a purchase screen where you can unlock the main game and also any DLC. And I think one of the main problems here is the fact that the base game is being sold for $19.99 and the DLC pack is sold for $20. And this just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, especially for the fact that this is an older game. If you go to Steam, then you're going to be able to buy this at a much lower price. You can pick up the base game for just $7.99, all thanks to the Steam summer sale that's going on right now. In fact, if you buy a bundle of Resident Evil 7 and 8, including all the DLCs, it'll be even cheaper than just Resident Evil 7 on the App Store. And it really puts into question what what Apple's strategy is exactly. They've released this game basically at too high a price, right in the middle of the Steam summer sale. And so I can't really see this game being particularly successful on the Mac desktop, just because many Mac gamers have access to other devices like Windows PCs, consoles, and Steam Decks, making Resident Evil 7 on the Mac App Store not a good value for money prospect, especially as a seven year old game. So anyway, it's a real shame that the game has released like this, especially as the Apple Silicon Mac port is very decent. The way that the pricing structure works is gonna set this game up to be a flop. If you want to find out more about how Apple's AAA game strategy is actually failing, then make sure to check out the video on the top right hand side of the screen right now. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you thought about this port. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.